Okay, it is very hot in Portland today, but I have turned off all my fans for long enough to do this video. And I am very excited to be talking about flying squads. Polo, 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 polo. All right, super brief history of flying squads. The first flying squad started in Brooklyn, um, New York City in 2018, fall of 2018, so about three years ago, Alexander Coast started the first flying squad in partnership with Brooklyn Apple Academy, which is in New York. Then a year later, yeah, a year later, I joined as the second flying squad in Portland, Oregon, along with my colleague, um, David Kobo. They and I started the second ever flying squad just from there this network was built because we started a website and we got contacted by people in eugene and austin for and now i think we have six seven eight i should get an exact number um eight we have eight uh, maybe nine or a ten soon but we have eight including a couple in new york one in portland and then Austin, Florida, Michigan, and Georgia, and then one in Seattle, and um, Canada as well. Some flying squads are within SD centers, homeschool centers, or schools. Um, and they meet in a library or in a park. So you meet outside of your typical building in order to cultivate this sense of we are in the city. We are in public space, taking up space as young people because part of our values, I guess, of Flying Squad is that young people should be <laughs> and technically legally are, but really should be allowed to take up space in their city the way adults do and we've gotten so far into this like young people should be in school during the day that even just seeing kids outside or teens or young people outside during typical school hours having fun living being integrated into their society is it's like disruptive for people yeah our vision is really this world in which young people are accepted out in the world and we use the world as our space, as our community, as our right, as our resources. We don't need to take young people out and put them in some box over here separated. We can all be part of the same society using these tools and this space. That's why we start outside of our center if it is a flying squad in the center. And then there's squads like mine and then the one in Florida and Georgia, I think, that aren't affiliated with the center and just meet on our own. So there's lots of different ways to do it. You can use it as an offering at your center to let young people go out into the world in a way that they aren't usually out in the world. Or you can use it as a place for people, homeschoolers typically, to gather and build community just at a flying squad. And it's really low barrier. It's really low barrier to start because you don't need a space. You don't need a bunch of paid facilitators. Um, there's not this huge overhead. There aren't all these licensing regulations. So you can really just say, we're going to meet at a park. We need, or a library. We need a location. We need an adult facilitator or mentor or instigator or person, an adult person <laughs> to exist with us and we need some people and you meet in your space no predetermined plans this is not a i am planning out a bunch of field trips for you and hand them to you and make the plan for you that's not what this is you meet up and you say what in this world this community would you like to do today the negotiations continue Oh, but you know what's also there? The like other big 
guys, we can get our nose pierced at Flair. Did you say like the whole purpose of Flying Squad is being in community with decisions to make in community and deciding what we want to do out in the world. And I think a lot of young people don't get that chance to just go out and be like, what do I want to do today? What's open to me? And we don't like get in a car and like caravan people around. So it's limited by where you can walk or where you can take public transportation. There isn't a big budget. We don't do a bunch of like expensive touristy things. So we're also limited by like, where is there something that's free or where is there something that we can like talk to them and get a free option? Where can we just play and be and enjoy each other without having to spend a bunch of money? So I think just that also that idea of being playful and creative in the world and finding places where we can just do that and just be. And I will say a lot of Flying Squad for us at least is just being together. Just being together out in the world and talking through things, laughing, playing, being ridiculously silly, processing the world through being ridiculously silly, processing the world through intense conversations, supporting each other in our struggles, just figuring out how to be together in this world, out in space, out in public, in places where we deserve to be able to be and live and play and build community. Let's pray <laughs> when the bell breaks, I will. Well, there was the Alec you're laughing. <laughs> Seems like a good time. Uh, I actually don't know what I'm gonna say. And I don't know what we're doing today. But well, it seems like Sila might want to run laps or something. Yeah, um, they're having hands on, right? <laughs> and I want to sit down and do nothing. So we'll see what happens. Silas, what do you want to do today? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Thank you. So low barrier to start. It's great if you're like, I want to be start facilitating SDE, but I don't have the resources or the energy or the desire to like take on this really big business or building. I will say it's difficult. <laughs> I will say it's like my biggest de-schooling hump yet. I will say that I feel like a total lack of control. And I think that's like wonderful, especially for those of us who are working on de-schooling our control issues, um, but it is lovely and wonderful and worth it through all the difficult and hard. Our role as the word facilitators is like, it's so weird. I can't even find a word that I think is right for a person who is older engaging with people who are younger in a community, right? Because we are community members and some of us have roles like taking on the administrative work of the building. There's just all this, all these things that go into being like an adult member in an SDE community and in ways we are facilitators and in ways the young people are facilitators and in ways we are learners and in ways the young people are learners. And I just have not found a word that I love. And I think, think that a lot of the Flying Squad peeps <laughs> would agree that there isn't like one word that we love. Right now it says facilitators on our website, um, but basically our role is to guide them and support them to support conflict resolution if they need it. Our role is also to know when conflict is between them and not the time for us to get involved. I think one of the biggest parts of my role personally is to just listen and talk about how these young people see themselves in the world and how they see their rights as being violated because there is a lot of that um, and just support them and being like, yes, <laughs> this is a violation of your rights. I am here for you in that. I hear you in that. I trust you in that. And that is like real and valid. And like, are there ways we can work towards undoing that or 
are there really not ways right now and you just need to be heard and supported. I think a lot of it is also being like this buffer between the like adult gaze, which means like adults looking at kids in a certain way and expecting like mischief or bad behavior or crossing boundaries or immaturity, like just expecting certain things from them and filtering their perceptions of what the kids are doing and engaging in through that like biased lens. So just being this buffer between them and the adults in the world, because sometimes just existing in the world as joyful young people is like disruptive to adults looking on and they assume you're up to something, right? So I think a lot of times it's to be the adult there being like, no, they're not up to something. Or even if like what this looks like up to something to you, like leave them alone. They have every right to climb that tree. It's a public space. They have every right to climb the tree or they have every right to be loud right now, actually. Or they have every right to say things that are hard for you to hear. Or they have every right to like take over the park and make it their space as long as they're respecting other people who are engaging in the park also, right? So just being that person who's there to stand up and be like, no, don't treat these kids that way. Or no, don't tell them what to do. As long as the kids in our squad are respecting other people's boundaries and rights as well, you don't have a right to infringe on their boundaries and rights. I think a lot of what I do, and I would say some some of the art facilitators kind of depends on where you are, a lot of what we all do is just being that buffer and that support for the young people. I guess the feet aren't as necessary. Yeah. But... Oh no, I have said that. Oh. I'm saying my feet not being necessary with the feet. I should say that I have no shoes. And then I met a man who had no feet. And I took his shoes because I mean, I don't need, he doesn't need them, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're a duck. And then last thing that I always have to do <laughs> is like check myself, check my biases, make sure I'm not imposing everything on them. I would say the adult can be like a participant with just as much voice as the young people. I tend to stay out of it unless I like have a really strong opinion about what I feel like doing that day. And then I, you know, say as much as any young person was would, but it's really important as the adult in the room that you don't take over with your voice. Even just the other day, these people I've known for a year or two, one of them was really trying to make their case and they came to appeal to me with what they wanted to do. And I was like, why are you asking me to get, to try and convince me that we should go somewhere so that I'll draw this hard line and be like, yeah, we can go there, it's my choice. It's not my choice. So every time they try and appeal to me, I redirect them and be like, actually, this. This isn't my choice. I'm not going to use my authority that way. And you don't have to convince me unless I'm one of many people who are like, I don't really want to do that. But really like you should direct your energy towards these kids who are unsure and talk to them and negotiate with them. Because I'm not going to take your side and then make everyone else take your side also. So I was like, <laughs> I pretty much said exactly that. Um, but I think you have to be careful not to sway the group because as adults, we have power to sway groups in lots of ways for lots of reasons. Yeehaw. If you want to join our network, you are welcome to. Basically, we ask that you align with our values so that, you know, we want to be in collaboration and community with people who align with values. And then we just support you in opening up Flying Squad, however you want. Um, and our values are basically like youth rights. Young people are respected here. Truly actually respected and listened to. That's why the, the adult in the room or in the group is so important. And then flying squads are also consent-based. If you're signing up for your kid, we ask that your kid actually wants to go. 
it's really, 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 really even more difficult to run a flying squad with kids who don't want to be there because you are like out in the world, you're walking, you have to like negotiate with your friends based on what you want to do. You can't just leave the group and go to the quiet room and read a book by yourself, um, unless we're sitting in the park. But usually you can't just do that every time. So it's really important that people want to be there and be involved. We are also committed to intentional and continual anti-oppression work, anti-racist work. We believe that that liberation is collective and that one of us can't be free without everyone being free. So for us, youth rights is tied up in the rights and anti-oppression of all people. So we are committed to that collective liberation work. Um, we also believe in community, mutual aid, taking care of one another, collective decision making, making collaboration. These values are reflected in the group. As, as you will hear, as I've said a bunch, uh, flying squads are collectively decided what we're going to do each day. And it's a community that really needs to rely on one another and support and engage with one another. But we also live those values in our network in our communication with each other and how we make decisions as a network and how we support each other. So it lives with the adults and the facilitation network. It lives with the kids in the overall network where they're all connecting with each other and it lives in individual flying squads. <laughs> Um, that's all for now. We all are really excited to talk about flying spots. Surprise, surprise. So if you have questions, let me know. Put them in the comments below. Email us. Check out our website, flyingsquads.org. I'll put all of this in the description box. But yeah. Also, um, Susan of the Seattle Flying Squad and Karen of the other Brooklyn Flying Squad, the second Brooklyn Flying Squad, did a session at the SDU weekend all about flying squads and that will be up on our website for you to see so if you want more information if this just gave you a taste and you want to learn more check out that i will put it in the uh, description box below once it's up there so if you have questions about any of this want to get in contact want to collaborate want to share something let us know